welcome everybody for our interview meet the stars meet the harp stars is the first live interview during this session and i'm very happy that i can not only welcome all of you to be with us today but of course to welcome our guest and we have a fantastic guest today we have alexander bonnet from the netherlands so i am sure you will enjoy our meeting today because i will just read now his biography so you can be sure you are really going to look forward for a great artist today we alexander bonnet studied with anne marie van der erden principal harpist of the barbans Orchestra and Edward Winzebrook, professor at the Brabant's Conservatory of Tilburg. After five years of freelance work with the Bar Brabant's Orchestra, he was engaged as principal harpist of Opera Forum in 1971. The same position was granted him with the Frisian Symphony Orchestra in 1975. From 1979 until 2014, he was principal harpist of the Netherlands Philharmonic Orchestra in Amsterdam. He taught at the Music Academy, artist Hohenschul von der Kunster in Enschede, an Amsterdam conservatora. He performs regularly as a soloist with the Netherlands Philharmonic Orchestra, the Netherlands Chamber Orchestra, and so on. His chamber music activities include a long-standing duo partnership with the violinist Angel Gimeno, sorry, Gimeno, and with the mezzo-soprano Gabriela Mulder, who is actually his wife as well. Together with Angel and Gabriela, he founded the Keros Ensemble. They have traveled intensively and performed in France, Germany, Spain, England, Finland, Israel, India, Taiwan, and Indonesia. They represented the Netherlands at the World, World, World Harp Congress in Paris, 1990, Copenhagen, 1993, Prague, 1999, Genève, 2002, and Vancouver, 2011. When Angel Kimeno left for Portugal in 2002, Vadim Cibulewski, concertmaster of the Netherlands Philharmonic Orchestra, took his place in the Keros Ensemble. In 1990, a CD was released with works of Dutch composers for violin and harp, all of which were written for and performed by Alexander Bonnet. So I'm sure you can really now know that we will have a great guest today who I very, very, very welcome to our day and evening mm -hmm. conversation interview at the Harp Channel. Welcome, Alex. Hello, nice to see you, and um, and uh, thank you very much for your invitation. It's my big pleasure and our big pleasure that you are with us today because we know each other for a really long time, and I have been very also honored that you have accepted my invitation for the World Harp Congress in Prague, which I have arranged in 1999, which actually I just now announced that uh, you were performing in the Congress as well. So. Alex, it's uh, so great. You look all the time the same. You you are just amazing how really wonderful everything is going on. And I'm so happy that you had time for us today. And it's really our, our big, not only pleasure, but honor. Alex, how are you? Yes, I'm fine. And um, well, I retired from the orchestra, of course, uh, some years ago. and But I'm still doing chamber music and uh, some coaching, teaching, depends on what's, what is demanded. But uh, yeah, I'm still active and uh, and practicing, of course. <laughs> and of course, we know because the Harp Channel, of course, presented you had a birthday recently. So happy birthday again now, even with some kind of days delay. But happy mm -hmm. birthday to you. And tomorrow, as you also mentioned today before the interview, your wife, Gabriele, has birthday tomorrow. So happy birthday to her. And we are happy that you can celebrate it also with us together. Gabri Gabriel, of course, Alex, uh, how long have you been in the orchestra? In, in total, 47 years. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, but in, in different, in several orchestras, of course, uh, as you saw in my uh, CV, uh, I traveled around in the Netherlands, and uh, and the, the, the last uh, orchestra was, of course, also the longest. I mean, it's um, that, that I was uh, playing with with the Netherlands Philharmonic Orchestra. 
of course. But because we have also read in the or read, uh, here heard in the um, s s your biography that you were studying with uh, Mr. Witzenburg. Yes. He, he was really an idol of, of the Netherlands uh, harpist because he was uh, really very very not only good harpist but also teacher. How was the studies with him? And he was the one who inspired you to play the harp, or how did you come to play the harp <laughs> itself? No, excuse me. <laughs> no, I. I, uh, I uh, I, when I was seven, I heard harp on the radio. And my mother was a violin player. And I asked her, what is this? Because I didn't know what it was. And she said, it's a harp. I already played the piano. And I said, apparently, that um, that will be my instrument. So, I, And every time I heard something on the radio and there was a harp in it, I picked it up. And in 59, um, in the Brabant Orchestra, that was appointed uh, a harpist for the first time, and that was Anna Marie van der Erde. And we were just my my parents were just um, uh, in contact with Madame Berghout, mm -hmm. you know her of course, the great Dutch harpist, and um, because well, they were preparing to uh, to send me to her to uh, to have lessons, but Anna Marie came in in our, in my hometown. So we, we, I started with her, and after years, I, um, when I went to the conservatoire, I, um, I was a student of Edward Witzenberg. And he, um, well, he is, of course, uh, he is a wonderful harpist, and, uh, and very, I, I love his, his teaching also very much. It was always a, a great pleasure and to work with him. And, um, uh, well, he was combined. He was a student of Fia Berghout, but mm -hmm. also of Marcel Grangeny. So he, one, one could say that he combined the, the Dutch harp playing with the French harp playing, so to speak. I mean, Marcel Grangeny was French, but was a Juilliard in the, in the United States. And um, but so I, I did my um, my whole conservatoire time with Edward, and um, in in. I, I didn't graduate already. I was in the orchestra. I, I, I graduated later, but I mean, it, it, it happened to play in the orchestra before I, I finished my studies. And, um, and because in the Brahmans Orchestra I had a, a conductor who liked to promote and to, to, to coach younger musicians. Mm -hmm. And so he asked me, also, although I, I didn't finish my studies at that moment, to come in the orchestra and to play with Anna Maria II. And um, in 1970, I graduated and um, Anna Marie took a sabbatical. And then I replaced her for a year. And then after that, I went to several orchestras to finish in Amsterdam. So you must be—you must have been very young when you started in the orchestra already, when you were still studying during the time. I was 18. <laughs> That's fantastic. And did you did you have the, the lessons also with Fia or only with Mr. Vincent Witzenburg? I never I never worked with Fia, but I, of course I knew her because she mm -hmm. she arranged also um, um, when my my parents wanted to buy a harp. She one of her students was selling mm -hmm. a harp, and you have a picture of that um, as a little boy that I am playing on a, a small era. And so we, since I played the harp, uh, we, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and in this picture is little Alex. <laughs> so you yeah. were about seven years old or eight? Yeah, so Eleven. Eleven already. Uh -huh. Yeah, my parents waited a little bit to, to, to buy an instrument because they wanted to be sure, of course, that it was not uh, just a fantasy, but that I really wanted to play the harp. <laughs> Of course, but it has been very expensive at the time also to get the instrument. Or did they buy it or they only rent it? No, no, they bought it from, from um, the uh, student of Madame Berghout. And um, yeah, it was, of course, not, uh, not, uh, not very cheap, but it was, it was, of course, an old era, so it was not so expensive. But I had the, the luck to, to start with a with battle harp. I didn't start with... Uh, with a, a, a small Irish harp, for example, but it was also, of course, uh, very often the, the fact. Mm -hmm. But I started immediately on, on that small era with 
the repeat on. That's one. And do you have this harp still at home, or did you? No, no, no. It's um, it it when I when I bought my um, my line and Healy twenty one, all twenty one. Also, because Edward said to me, uh, you should buy that instrument because that's that's the good instrument for you. And yes, he was right. It was a, a very good choice. And then, of course, I had to sell uh, the little Ura to another student, so to the next generation, so to speak. <laughs> of course. <laughs> and then later on, I um, I bought uh, after I retired from the orchestra, I was able to buy my 23 line in Healy that I played in the orchestra. Mm -hmm. So I still have the both instruments, of course. And my old uh, 21 is from uh, 1912. So it's quite a, an old lady, so to speak. But, but uh, these, old, these old instruments, they were so beautiful and the sound was always so fantastic. So they kept so long. So I'm sure that even it's old lady, it's really great instrument even in these days. Yeah, that's true. It's still a good instrument and it's still in good shape. And of course, I do my best to, to keep it that way. <laughs> so you still perform? Uh, you do some recordings at the moment, or what? No, your... no I am. Um, I don't make recordings now. I have. Uh, I have a, a flute harp duo with a former colleague of the orchestra who went out of the orchestra. Not because of retirement, but because she she wanted to do other things, and mm -hmm. so she was a, a bit younger than than I am. But um, we um, we play together and we have concerts, of course. Well, at the moment, all the concerts that we had was uh, were cancelled, of course, because of the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. But we hope that um, well, maybe in October or November, you never know, <laughs> that we can start again with uh, with uh, well. Not, well, we, we can we can uh, of course uh, work together. That's not the problem. Mm -hmm. But uh, for the performances, we have to, to know that it's uh, allowed to do it. I mean, because uh, for the moment, uh, every uh, uh, well, there is nothing possible. I know. I have only seen that maybe the concert Gebau already started somehow to make the concerts, but uh, it's probably not for everything going on now. Yeah, the Concert Gebouw Orchestra is um, uh, it's playing in small ensembles in an empty hall. Mm -hmm. And uh, Petra, the, the, the principal harpist of the Concert Gebouw, sent me a picture a few days ago when she said that, look, we were, they took out all the chairs of the Concert Gebouw Hall. And so they placed the orchestra in the, in the, in the audience part so that they could uh, have uh, the, the distance. Mm -hmm. and she said, well, I, I like it very much because it means that we at, at least we can start again. Indeed. So, so I don't know uh, what they did, but they, 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 had, rehear they had rehearsals in, in, this, uh, post in, this, uh, in this formation. I mean, so <laughs> it's mm -hmm. very funny to see the orchestra in the, in the audience, uh, not on the stage. <laughs> it is very unique. Certainly it's something that is, uh, hopefully it will not happen again, but it's very unique. And I think that in the future we will have hopefully also good memories on the very different different time of uh, time of uh, life at uh, which we were able to go through yeah. this. Uh, so uh, alex you your parents were musician as well or not well my, my mother was a violin player professionally and my father was a technician but he, uh, he loved to sing and uh, had a nice voice and uh, but he, he loved opera and so there was a lot of music at home. <laughs> I can imagine. So you were really surrounded by that, by the music. And when you were uh, little, what kind of school did you work on? Do you remember what school did you start with as the uh, heart? Yes, I remember that I, I played, of course, boxa in Yiddish, but mm -hmm. also um, um, uh, what was the name? Pozzoni, but the other Italian. Um, well, I'm sorry. Did, I, um, I didn't know. It, it was not Ditsi, it was. Uh, ah, well, it will, come, it will come back. I don't, but uh, Maria Gossi. Yes, the, oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Gossi. I started with that, and, and I had an old um, uh, boxer, the, the very big uh, book. <laughs> but we made a choice. We didn't do everything, of course. 
So I started with that, and then later on, well, the, the usual <laughs> repertoire with Nada Mamets and uh, Ron, <laughs> oh, the Seven Hammer and Tudis, and uh, all the, the, the usual stuff that, that, that right. we all do to, to, to work. So. <laughs> But it's interesting because when you were studying with Mr. Wetzenburg, as you said that he was a student also of, of Mr. Granjani. Yeah. So was he very much involved by, by the playing of Mr. Granjani or he started to do something else? Because I have seen when I was doing the World Wide Online Harp Congress that Mr. Wetzenburg was also very directed to the historic uh, harp playing. He was playing in the historic harps. Yeah. So what was his really best uh, view mm -hmm. of uh, a harp was he more concentrated on the historic harps or on the modern one well both i mean he has a fantastic collection of harps and mm -hmm. of, of also uh, ancient harps but he um, he played uh, the, the the modern harp of course he had a wolitzer beautiful wolitzer and um, well you still have it <laughs> and um, and he has also a wolitzer that belonged to rosa spear so that's the teacher of Madame Berghout. Yeah, so one generation before. <laughs> that's fantastic. Yeah, and um, and uh, Edward worked also with Rosa P, although she was at that time, of course, uh, well, mm -hmm. a little bit older. But um, she, uh, yeah. So he um, and and he uh, about Grand Jeanne, he he took um, yeah he. Uh, he took over, so to speak. Um, he, he learned a lot about being in at Juilliard, and mm -hmm. so um, his way of um, grand articulation and that kind of thing. So you know what I mean, just closing the hands, etc., in the optimum. And uh, he um, he did that also with his students, of course. I mean, mm -hmm. with, uh, so he, um, as I said, he made a mix of what he learned in the Netherlands and what he learned abroad with Mr. Roger. And because I know that some of the men, as they have, as you, have bigger hands than the women. Have you or did Mr. Granjani play with the fifth finger or did he ever try to say to the student that you can play with the fifth finger? As far as I know, he didn't. I met him once in in New York in seventy one, but um, we discussed a lot of things. But <laughs> he, um, because I'm half French, so of course he liked it to speak French with me. And um, although I'm born in the Netherlands and raised in the Netherlands, mm -hmm. and um, but no, um, as far as I know, Mr. Conjoni didn't play with five fingers. So that uh, that came later. Of course, now you see that uh, some. Uh, Harpists uh, do that, of course, like uh, mm -hmm. and uh, so and maybe you. I don't know. Do you do? No, it? no, 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 no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I am not the one who will risk this kind of thing. No, 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 no. My my fifth finger is very small one. No, no. But uh, and Mr. Vincentburg, he was certainly playing normally also only four fingers each hand. Yeah, yeah, and um, he did also. Um, uh, lecture recitals so and that it, it took uh, quite a lot of heart with him and then showed of course the, the differences of uh, also Arpadopia and, and Irish harp and uh, single action harps and uh, so it uh, yeah he did a lot about he, he knew also a lot about uh, uh, historical harps. And did you play also the historical harp? Did he taught you or not? No, no, no I played on the on the modern one. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, but um, but he um, he performed and he did also um, triple harp, so he he really was um, very uh, skilled. He, he did, uh, yeah, with several different harps. That's fantastic. We we should still talk about him in present because he's uh, still living in in Holland or where he's based now. He is still in the Hague, where he's living for well, I don't know how many years. <laughs> I think 50 years or something like that, and um, he's 85, and we celebrated his 85th birthday a few months ago with the Dutch um, Harp uh, uh, Association, of course. There was a, a concert, and uh, students of him uh, his played, and um, so he, um, yeah, he, I must say he was he was not in um, in top condition. He had a problem, but um, still. Um, 
it's still going strong. It's it's okay. It's going better. But um, and he didn't uh, want to cancel, the, of course, the, the the festivities. So he came, and mm -hmm. uh, um, it's going better now. He's he, and it's the first time that he that he is ill because I've in all the years that I know him, I've never mm -hmm. seen him ill. He was always in very good health, but. Mm -hmm. uh, this time uh, he had uh, some problems and uh, well, he is recovering from that. So let's hope that everything is going to be only better now. So, and do you know if he's still playing the harp or if he really quit it totally already at this age? He's still playing and he's also practicing every day. And mm -hmm. um, But because of that illness, he is playing more on the Irish harp than on the big bullets, for example, because mm -hmm. it's tiring. Mm -hmm. and, um, but he, he retired from the stage. I mean, he is not performing. Uh, maybe he's performing, let's say, in a, to, well, in an elderly home, for example, for elderly people. That kind of things he is doing. But uh, for the moment, of course, uh, nothing is happening because also of course. <laughs> of course. But I am sure that everybody who ever plays any instrument, uh, if they would quit, they will actually die. So I'm sure that he really mm -hmm. needs to to still be in contact with the music and with the instrument because it's it's yeah. the part of the life. Yeah, of course, that's for sure. Yeah. yeah, and because we have here also some of your pictures, you sent me. If we, I can show them to the public so that you can maybe say a little bit about it. This ah. is of course you in the orchestra. Yes, this is my my last concert in the in the Concertgebouw in Amsterdam. And uh, of course, uh, Gabrielle, my wife, took some pictures, but it's quite difficult because, well, when you are on stage, you are uh, on, uh, higher than in the, in the audience, of course. So she, she tried to, uh, to, to make some pictures of that because everybody who is, um, um, we have two um, farewell, so to speak. One is in the, in the concert hall and the other one is on the opera. And this is also in the concert hall. And um, my uh, my second half was uh, uh, Jana Tsibulevskaya, the, the wife of our concert master. And what piece did you play? What was the last piece you played in the orchestra? It's seven years ago. Well, <laughs> matter. If you don't remember, it doesn't matter. But I thought that maybe you remember if it was two harps that it has been really for two harps, or it, it, it was only zone. It, it was two harps. It was not uh, not a doubling. No, yeah. No. But because yeah, I'm sorry. one more picture. I don't know if it's clear to see. Yeah. Well, I, I got some flowers and uh, the children and uh, yeah, we all of course took the picture and we had some friends. And also the parents of one of the partners of uh, the daughters, and um, that's well. It's in concert from now after after the concert, of course. It's beautiful memory. And tell me honestly, do you miss it? I'm sure that it's different now, right? Yeah, um, yeah. When you have played so long in orchestra, you, you like to continue. But well, it's uh, it's a rule that you have to <laughs> to retire at a certain moment, <laughs> and. Um, but it's uh, it's okay, and um, I'm I'm still sometimes um, uh, let's say uh, semi-professional uh, amateur orchestras are asking if I want to play with them, and um, I do regularly some some of that kind of uh, concerts, and uh, that's that's very funny to do. That's it. great. Right. Yeah. That's great. So does it happen also that even you are not officially in the orchestra, that the orchestra asks you to come again to play, maybe if they have three harps or two harps? Does um, it happen? Not, it, it never happened till yet, but next mm -hmm. season, if everything goes as it should be programmed, we, they will play Bruckner 8th Symphony with three harps and with my former uh, chief conductor, Hartmut Hainchen. And okay. uh, I said to Sandrine, who is now uh, in charge, that um, if uh, if it's possible, I would like to be part of the suite and, and to work once more with, with my chief, of course. Mm -hmm. That's lovely. That's fantastic. And yeah. please, because you were also, you performed a lot solo as well. And you were also playing and cooperating with Mr. Flotus. Is that right? Yeah. And in Prague, I played the... the, the, the 
the, the piece of my, my slot house for harp and small orchestra. And, and he was there. I have you the program of the... <laughs> of the <laughs> so it, it was really a very, very beautiful program and uh, you were performing the fantasy by, yeah. by Mr. Flotis. And uh, did you perform it afterwards or before somewhere? I, um, I played it several times with the orchestra and, and when, you, when you asked me, um, I just had played it because uh, it's quite an uh, unknown piece. I mean, it's not often played. And, um, but um, because I, I played it with my orchestra and then after that, when we, uh, we had our World Heart Congress meetings, you asked me, if you asked if someone knew that piece and I said, yes, I know it, I have played it. So that's why you asked me and you invited me to play it. I was very happy that you have accepted. And if you don't mind, I have a little surprise, really uh -huh. little for you. So wait a minute, I will just put it there. I don't know how to how it works because I have never done this. It's my first time to do that. And I'm not really expert in it. So just a second. Yes. I will do that. So it was a little, little just example. I will just stop the sound. I'm sorry that the uh, the quality is not as good as I wish that it is, but uh, at least little example of the performance from Prague live from your Congress. <laughs> and I hope that I will be able to to give you uh, this this recording audio so that you can really hear in the better uh, quality because I have tried and I know that it was not so good, but at at least to hear the example, how beautiful, not only performed, but the piece is really very nice. Yeah. It has only one thing, Mr. Flothuis, never think about our pedals. And <laughs> the piece, it's, it's about, um, let's say, eight or nine minutes, and you have 392 pedal changes. My goodness. <laughs> Oh my goodness, this is the worst because you don't see that it's so so difficult for the pedals, but uh, yeah, you work hard. Especially, the, the I think, the, the first um, 20 bars. that um, he, he said that also to me. I said, you are certainly very happy when you have played those two 20 bars. <laughs> he, he knows that it is difficult, but he, well, it's his way of writing and composing, so. <laughs> he's, but he's, I thought that we, he really understands the harp because he wrote so many pieces for the instrument. Yes, of course. And well, he was, of course, uh, very uh, uh, good friends with uh, Madame Berghardt. Yeah. And um, the, the um, uh, Danse et les Jacques uh, for, for, for the plot house is, is written for her. Yeah. And you know it, of course, you played it. 
Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. So it's it's really, I'm so surprised that he wrote some piece where he knew that it's so difficult for the pedals and that he wrote it like that he would not understand our instrument at all. <laughs> well, he didn't say clear, that's all. He said, that's what I want to hear and uh, you, you have to, 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 to do it. <laughs> Everything is possible, right? <laughs> so we have to adjust. <laughs> I remember that when I um, when I was invited by the orchestra to play it for the first time, I um, I had a meeting with him at the Conservatoire in Amsterdam, and because he was living in Amsterdam, and uh, so he uh, I, I invited him to, to come to the Conservatoire, and we we worked together on the play on the, uh, the piece because uh, well, it's there was just one recording and. Uh, there are always questions, so I, it's the best solution is to speak with the composer, of course. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So he came and uh, we worked on it, and uh, yeah, it was very, very uh, great pleasure. And this and, uh, piece was his last piece to have written for the harp, or did he compose after some other pieces? I think so. Yes, and not with not with orchestra, but he he. Um, um, this this is one piece. It's not it's not the last. Certainly not the last piece he he, he composed. And um, uh, I think and what I uh, very much appreciated was that he was coming to Prague when when it was played when I played it. And um, that was uh, it's, it's really nice that he uh, he took the opportunity to come. Of course, but I, I listened to this before our uh, interview and I was really so impressed because it's really a very, very beautiful piece. And I yeah. hope it's also to, to get it to, to uh, like the, the music that it's possible to, to order it because it's sometimes very difficult for the orchestra to get the material. So the harpists usually don't work on the piece which they cannot use for the concert. So I hope that this piece is possible to, to order. I think so. I mean, um, I, the, the orchestra parts are for, for rental, I suppose, but um, the, the hard part, of course, you can buy. And at Donemus, yeah, I think that you know what I mean with Donemus, the, the, the Dutch uh, music uh, uh, library, so to speak. Of course, yeah, yeah. I'm just now because I forgot to look that there are some comments, some some messages for you so only that you you can see them also it's wonderful thank you very much for everybody to to write to us if you have any questions to our guest please don't hesitate and don't wait too long and write them because we will be very happy of course to uh, to answer yes, so the record will be on the hub channel uh, the record yeah well i would like to so I hope that I will be able to to manage to put it on the Harp channel if you allow me as well. So yeah. it will be, of course, my big pleasure to present it because I don't think that there is any recording of this piece anywhere. Well, the, the, there is, of course, the the, the, the CD of, of the concert in, in Prague with, uh, where I played it. There exactly. Is. Yeah. This is the one. Yeah, exactly. So only in case... Uh, it's not a problem. I would be really very happy to present it, the whole piece on the YouTube because it will be really, I think that everybody would love to hear it. And your yeah. performance is amazing. It's really, it sounds so great. Honestly, I was really so impressed when I heard it. So bravo again to you after 30, 21, year, actually 21 years. It's amazing how long it's, it is, but actually it's like yesterday. And I, I hope that you have also nice memories on your present in Prague. Yes. Absolutely, it was a, a wonderful congress, and uh, you did very well. And uh, yeah, the atmosphere, everything, and it's a beautiful city, of course. Yeah, so you have, uh, yeah, it was it was great, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much. But because you were not only in Prague, you were presented at many of the congresses. I have as I have read already at the beginning of at your biography. So your first congress was in Paris, where you were performing. Uh, I think uh, you no know, um, 1985 in in Jerusalem. Oh, okay. Yeah, and um, and, and Frothuis was also there at that moment, and um, I played um, a piece by, for violin and harp uh, from Lex van Delden. Okay. Yes. And I played only. Um, Two of the three movements because it was it was not finished. It, mm -hmm. it, um, it was not finished in uh, the composition was not finished. 
later on, of course, I got the, the, the complete uh, music. <laughs> and Van Delden um, uh, wrote it um, because I asked for it, and but he um, did it also for the 70th birthday of Clothuis because they were very good friends together. And uh, so uh, there were two occasions to uh, to play or to, to to compose that piece. One mm -hmm. was for Clothuis and also for me. <laughs> That's wonderful. What comes to my mind, do you know who uh, actually inspired or actually asked Mr. Flotius to write the cadences for Mozart Concerto? To, to, to play what? Sorry. And, and, uh, that because Mr. Flotius uh, wrote the Mozart Concerto's cadenzas, which are the most playable cadenzas now in these days. Do you know which harpist or maybe who, who was asking him to do so? I think that it could be Madame Berghardt, of course. Mm -hmm. and, and, I, and he is a, he is a, he did a lot of research on Mozart. So I, I like and I always also played the, the Potthuis cadenzas because they are really uh, well in in the style of Mozart. I mean, they are not too long, and it's uh, it sounds well. Yeah. Absolutely, no, no, no. <laughs> absolutely, no, absolutely, and it really interests me because, of course, usually the the composers they might come with this idea by themselves, but usually it is up to the harpists or up to the musicians who ask the composer. So maybe you are right that it was Fia. I thought that maybe it was you who no, asked. Me. I think that it was Fia, and I, I know that later on he, uh, he he worked also with Edward because he he was not completely satisfied, but at the end. Um, it, it stays as it was. So he, uh, he tried, he uh, experimented a little bit, uh, made different uh, cadenzas, but um, I think that the, what we usually play, that, that's it. I mean, uh, there are no second or third variations on it. <laughs> I see, I see. That's interesting to know that he wanted to do it differently still. That's, that's very yeah. interesting. He was, of course, a very... Um, a strict person. He wanted to be very, very precise in what he did, and so he um, well, and and he was very uh, um, self-criticism. He had he, he was always um, well difficult even for himself because he wanted that the composition should be uh, the best. Yeah, yeah. And what was your Piece which you played the the most, uh, like you like the most in your life. Which piece you always enjoyed to play? Um, you mean with uh, concerti? Whatever, maybe even in the con yeah, maybe concertis or any piece. It could be maybe that you play the best, uh, like most, like the the solo piece, some of the pieces, or with the orchestra. Yeah. And of course, um, uh, I'm, I'm in the first place, of course, an orchestra musician because I did it so long and. And I, I played as a soloist, of course, but it was not, um, let's say, the, the main uh, goal that I had because, um, well, I was so busy with the orchestra and I, I got uh, the opportunities to play with the orchestra so as, as a soloist and several times also played the flute harp, of course, on both sides. And I like that always very much. I mean, it's, uh, it's a great pleasure to, to, to do that. And, uh, and um, we played also with the orchestra a piece that you never, you don't hear very much, very often. That's the I Sentimenti di Carl Philipp Emanuel Bach from Werner Henze. I see. And that's for, that's also for flute, harp, and uh, and chamber orchestra. Mm -hmm. And um, and I I played it also because our, our chief conductor Henze um, programmed it, so that we uh, yeah, he asked us to play it. That's wonderful. Yeah, that was uh, was really interesting to uh, to do. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but yeah, yeah, Mozart is of course uh, very special I, I, for us all, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, and, and uh, of course the dancers by the Lucy and Ravel in the septet. I mean that the, the three that three compositions that are so uh, important for artists, uh, I think. But, uh, you have to play them. <laughs> of oh. course, many, many other pieces. <laughs> I never played Kinastera, for example, but I'm, mm -hmm. I'm absolutely sure that it's, it, it's um, great to do that. <laughs> absolutely. No, it's true that the pieces you have mentioned, they are really like the main, who everybody 
not only enjoy but should play and should really know because this is really a, a treasure in our repertoire for sure Absolutely. Yeah. yeah so and with your wife who is the singer do you yeah. still play together well we had um, gabriel is um, um, uh, is an architect and also a singer mm -hmm. and uh, so um, we had uh, some the last years we were, she was very focused on uh, on big projects with uh, architecture and but last year we um, we had uh, concerts in France we were asked to do uh, concerts and uh, and so uh, well, we we took it up and uh, and we did it <laughs> and we did a program with uh, um, songs through four centuries uh, love songs in four centuries. Mm -hmm. From Monteverdi to, uh, let's say, um, uh, well, not the but um, Reinaldo Hahn, and, um, and so it, it was a it was a nice program and with Russian songs also, Tchaikovsky, of course. <laughs> so, we, but yeah, it depends on the the the, the demand. I mean, um, and she's still working also as an architect. So I mean, we we are not. Uh, we we do it if we have an opportunity to uh, to really uh, to, to perform it, of course. That's fantastic. That's fantastic that she can combine these two. It's actually both. It's art, but it's different, and you have to focus yeah. different ways. So it's really fantastic that she can still do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a great pleasure. Yeah, and Alex, because you are also teacher, you are still teaching in these days when it's the pandemic, or you just could not now teach online. Um, no, I wasn't asked to, to teach at the moment. Uh, sometimes, um, just before the pandemic, I had um, a coaching uh, with the the, the, youth, the National Youth Orchestra. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The auditions and, and part of the jury, and then later on, when the rehearsals start, uh, then um, then I'm coming to uh, to help and to coach the, the, the students who are invited to play. And, uh, but of course, after the pandemic, um, the, the project that would have been in, in coming summer was of course canceled. And it was uh, a pity, but the last concert we did in, in, uh, in January was uh, the concerto for August by Bartok. It's so interesting because when I search for your videos, I have found also video where you played with your colleague or with your student the Berlioz Fantastic Symphony mm -hmm. Fantastic and you play the first harp but mm -hmm. no you play the second harp you play the second harp or how was it I think that you play the second harp but then you were asking do you want to switch the harps you know all the parts like in both ways you know first and second harp both parts that you can switch from one to another one immediately well immediately maybe not but I mean it's it's possible yes and and uh... I have also a, um, a, a score, a hard part, uh, a combination of the two halves, if you mm -hmm. have to play it alone. Because that uh, sometimes uh, happens in, in smaller orchestras that they don't invite two halves, they just want one half, and then you have to, to manage to play as much as you can. <laughs> True. Unfortunately, sometimes even the big orchestra wants only one harp because they just don't want to play the second harp. So we should not, when it's the big orchestra, we should not say that it's possible to play in one harp because the second harpist would not have a chance to play. But it's amazing. So you have also already arranged the symphony fantastic for one harp only. Well, I did not make the arrangement. It was mm -hmm. given to me by Anna Marie, my first teacher. And mm -hmm. uh, well, another project I'm, I'm still doing, I am um, scanning my orchestra uh, parts, and I just finished with the symphonic parts, and now I will do the, the operas. And so um, I will, um, well, it will be available for who wants to, uh, to have a look at it. That's fantastic, because it's always so important to have all the collections of all the orchestra parts, which are already prepared by by so so experienced harpists from the orchestra as you are. So mm -hmm. it will be and it will be published or it will be only in your private. I, I, I think it will be um, maybe um, I will ask if you can put it in the, uh, the archives. Mm -hmm. And of course, I can um, I can uh, give it to, uh, to a harpist who wants to, to have it. 
That's yeah. fantastic. Because That's I, fantastic. it's quite a lot of, of uh, it took me, well, some years, <laughs> because you cannot scan every day. You, you, you have also other obligations, of course. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, um, it's, it's quite something, but okay. Well, because, for example, and I don't know if you played it ever, but uh, the, the Botzek by Albert Baer, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you have so much things to enharmonize in that piece because it's not written. For he didn't heart. think about for the heart. He just mm -hmm. wrote you know, it's like Lothar and <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I I uh, I made of course my score, and that score is is um, is playable as far as I think that it's a good solution and it will be on um, it, it, it's scanned, so it will be available for who wants to to have a look at it. That's fantastic. And is it any chance that you will have it on any of your page or something that we can, like those who would be interested, they can uh, download it? Or is it only that you can send it as a PDF? I must I must say that I, I, I don't know for the moment uh, how the uh, distribution is, but um, it, can, it, it can be as PDF and it can be uh, that, that you can download yourself, of course. It will be yeah. because, of course, if now many harpists listen to it and they will be just hungry to know, you will be only doing that, you will be only sending the parts. So maybe it will be really nice to think if you will have any friend who can help you to download it into the internet so that everybody can download it by themselves so that you don't need to do it. Yeah, otherwise they have to, to send me an email and ask for, for the score. I mean, that's also possible, of course. Exactly, yeah. That's but you will have a lot of work with it. Yeah, but that's a wonderful, really wonderful news. And thank you for all the hard work that you have done all this work because this is a, such a treasure. When you really work so much in the orchestra, you prepared all the parts you did. Also operas or only in the symphonic pieces? No, no, opera also. We are, we, we, you can compare the, 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 the Netherlands Philharmonic with, uh, let's say, the Viennese because the Viennese orchestra plays opera and play symphonic. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have also the, the, the Dutch um, uh, chamber orchestra in, in, incorporated in the orchestra. So we have also, uh, we have three possibilities. You have the opera, you have the symphonic repertoire, and you have the, the, the chamber music, uh, the chamber orchestra. That's so, a lot. Yeah. yeah. But that, that made it also so interesting because, mm -hmm. um, for example, um, well, we just, saw some pictures about um, my last concert but the last opera i did i, I finished with the operas and it was the ring the, the back one i will show it again for the people who came a little bit later so that they can right. see. <laughs> so yes but, uh, but uh, i don't have pictures of that but i um, my last uh, performance was was the, the whole the whole ring of Wagner. Uh, wow with six harps, of course, <laughs> and even seven in the, in the Rheingold. But uh, that was, um, yeah, it was, I, I, I was already in, in, I had retired already, but I asked the orchestra, I wanted to um, to do um, as, as final uh, opera the, the, the ring. So it was okay, and so we did. And it was, it was um, very special because in, uh, Two of the four operas, the whole orchestra was, was on stage. Mm -hmm. The stage in Amsterdam is so big that we could have the whole orchestra on stage, and beside that, the the the, the singers and the the, the whole uh, uh, the, everything what you normally see. In the, in the amazing! Orchestra. That's amazing. That's really fantastic. And with with whom? Because of course, in the orchestra, we're only two harpists. Like I, I bet that you have two harpists. But, you know, um, um, the national of the Netherlands Philharmonic is is a, a merge of three orchestras: the Amsterdam Philharmonic, mm -hmm. the Utrecht uh, City Orchestra, and the Chamber Orchestra, the Dutch Chamber Orchestra. And in, in Utrecht, there were two harps, and I was alone in Amsterdam. So when the Netherlands uh, Philharmonic was um, uh, together, we had three harps. And um, at a certain moment, the second, uh, the, the, the other principal 
and uh, he she um, she retired because she was a bit older than I am, and um, and later on the second half uh, passed away after six months being retired. So that was a real pity. And then um, uh, for Ada came Sandrine, Sandrine Chatron. So when I was there, we were together. We played together. And uh, when I retired, she, she stood alone. They didn't take a second, a second position. And mm -hmm. now maybe, maybe, depends on a lot of things, of course, they are thinking about having two harps again. So, well, I hope so. <laughs> I hope so too, because we really need the positions for the instruments, and we—it's really sad that many of the orchestras, as I said before, they cut more the the setting so that they want only one harp, and it's really pity. It's so important that we keep the second harp in case there exists one, so that we keep it and we really try to to just force for it so that it will stay for the other generations. Yeah, of course, and. Uh, the, the... The only orchestra that has really two harps is the, the Royal Concertgebouw Orchestra in Amsterdam. That, they have two harps, but mm. uh, the, the Radio Philharmonic has only one, and mm. uh, Rotterdam has one, and the second is, is playing very often with them, but I mean, that's mm. it. And in The Hague also, it's only one. Mm. So uh, It's a pity, yeah. yeah. So. Let's hope that in the in the Amsterdam uh, Philharmonic that it will keep so that it will really yeah. stay with the two harps there. As, yeah. as there, is enough, there is enough to play to to have two harps. It's, absolutely, it's, absolutely. absolutely. That, uh, that you have uh, that you have two harps. It's 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 uh, it's needed. <laughs> absolutely, I totally agree. And uh, Alex, now uh, when you retired. How do you still, you are in contact with the harp and you have some projects with the violinist, as you said. So is there anything what you plan now for the future? Are you working on some program now for the future? Well, um, yes, we are working on uh, several pieces for um, flute, cello and harp. Mm -hmm. So we have some, some, uh, some older pieces, um, Sonata da Vinci or Alessandro Stradella. And um, and also um, I don't know if you know it, Christian um, uh, Bach has written it for it, a sonata for harp with violin and cello. And, and is it uh, original? Is it yeah. original? Yes. Wow. It's, yeah, it's edited by um, um, well, English artist. Let me have a look. <laughs> I'm always surprising with the questions, which sometimes I don't want to put the guest in the in the way of of not knowing. So I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's um, it's edited by David Watkins. Oh, David Watkins, of course. Yeah, sure. And um, yeah, it's uh, it's funny. It's it's maybe not the, the 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 best piece ever written, but it's it's nice to have a piece of one of the sons of Bach. <laughs> absolutely, no, absolutely. But of course, it has been uh, written for the little harp, for the small harp at the time. So sure. I think it's for the for the for the single action. Yes. Indeed. Yeah, indeed. But you are playing only the big harp. Which harp? I have seen now that when you were leaving, you have the harps behind you. What yeah. kind of instruments do you have there? Well, the twenty-one and the twenty-three. Mm -hmm. The, the 21 is, is the golden one, and uh, and the 23 is the, 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 the orchestra harp. The orchestra harp, yeah. And it's also the harp that I played in in Prague. I had um, I asked for um, for um, uh, taking the harp to to the World Harp Congress by the orchestra, and they agreed. So I I took, and now it's here. But I mean, it's it's the harp that that you heard in in Prague. Mm -hmm. And we heard a little bit of the of the recording, but I'm really sorry for for not a good quality. But honestly, I hear it very well. But it's only I unfortunately when it's broadcast through this this channel, it is unfortunately not working well. So, but the sound is normal and it's really beautiful. So don't worry. As I as soon as I will post it on the on the YouTube, you will hear really good quality recording. So, of course. No Alex, is there any wish you have? 
still and you your dreams something or your plans for the even for summer if of course we are not allowed now to travel is there any place where you would which you would like to visit or which you would like to go to well we have a little um, uh, farmhouse in uh, france so we would like to go there of course mm -hmm. we could, when, when when corona started we were in france and a friend called us and said be careful the borders are closed france is closing the borders so we packed everything <laughs> we went back home <laughs> and since then we uh, we could not go of course and we hope that we will be able to go in July or August to mm -hmm. that place, and um, if we go in uh, in August, then I don't know if it will happen. But if Gargiles is the festival is uh, uh, is working, I don't mm -hmm. know. I don't go on out, but then I think that we will go to, to have some concerts. And uh, yeah, what is the wish that I have? I hope that um, because. There are very strange things going on at this moment uh, with Corona that people are thinking that culture and music is not very important. And that's, of course, mm -hmm. wrong. It's part of a human being to have music. And uh, so I hope that after Corona, the things will go better and that uh, will continue. I mean, uh, it's, okay. it's weird. And uh, and of course, uh, well, I hope to, to see you next year in Cardiff, of course. Yeah, me too. I hope. I just wanted to ask you that if you are planning to go there, and if you are planning to, did you plan to perform or just to visit? No, well, uh, there are many other people that can perform. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> but I mean, I know that you could perform really wonderfully as well. So I just thought that maybe you will have some some piece which you would like to present as well. No, for the moment not, and um, and uh, well, I think that uh, that they um, they arranged with uh, Catherine Finch uh, uh, a good program, and with Isabel, of course, and uh, they did a, a huge uh, amount of work, of course, to, to to let it happen now. I mean, this year, and now it's it's very sad for them, but uh, well, we have we have to postpone it. Of course, it's not possible. Of course, yeah. You and were also in the in the in the board of directors certain time. Yes, I'm still in the board and um, in the corporation. And okay. uh, I was in, in 99, I was secretary. But in 2011, when we had the concert in Vancouver, um, Vive took over. And uh, well, first, um, uh, Kathy. But um, a year later, Kathy uh, was nominated for chairperson. And Niva Robux took over the, the secretary chip. <laughs> I see. And and but you are a very important part of the congresses and of all the harp events. You were many times also in the uh, in the juries of the competitions. What was the last per, uh, last attendant uh, competition for you? Which which part uh, where you took part for the last time as a jury member? Uh, I think it's two years ago in the Rosa Spear uh, national competition in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. and, and I was in the, I was in the jury, of course, for the for the pedal harps and not for the for the smaller ones. Of but uh, so the, the jury is uh, is um, um, selected on the instruments that are played, of course. So you have the, the Irish harps and uh, and you have the pedal harps. Mm -hmm. And, and is this? And this competition is every year, regularly, or no, no. It's I think it's in every two years. Mm -hmm. There was there was last January, December, January. There was again uh, the competition, but I was not in the jury because they change it every time, of course. Yeah, of course. And what is the next? Do you have any plan to go to another jury now in the future? No, not for the moment. But that has to do, of course, with Corona. <laughs> no. Absolutely, no, because uh, nobody knows now what's going on and what what will be and so on. So, but hopefully we will come to the time time to time that we will come to to the normal life again as a as I hope very much. Yeah. It, um, it's a very uh, unpleasant time. I know. I honestly, I am 
happy that I can be at home because the traveling is sometimes too much. So I'm honestly enjoying that I can stay at home and I'm not allowed to travel. But of course, it's not uh, not very pleasant for many, many people. And I understand that it's not easy. Yeah, indeed. Are you, are you able to do it by internet, the teaching? I do by internet, the in teaching. Yeah, I do. Yeah, every day. But it's it's honestly it's uh, very good but it's very tiring for yeah. for the mind because you are still online and you are still watching in the uh, on the screen so your eyes gets really tired as well and it's it's and the sound is not very uh, good i mean so it's difficult for for you to to exactly yeah. what what's, what's, what the sound is Absolutely. Not always you can have really good connection also. So it is, but we have to adjust. Of course, it's better than nothing. We have yeah. to just adjust to that. And of course, um, yeah, we have to go and keep going. But um, time, it's um, hopefully it will come to, to the normal normal kind of uh, yeah. life again. Yeah. But with, the harp, with the harp, it's a little bit difficult because, of course, as we have, um, as we all use the one harp for the teaching, it's also not very good for this time because the students cannot play on the one harp. It's then it's no hygienic at all. So that's so, so very difficult. And it's only instrument if comparing to any other because piano can be cleaned, violin and other instrument they have their own, but the harp it's not possible to be cleaned. Every harp is wouldn't to bring their own strings. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not good. <laughs> it's not really a very good solution, I guess. Yeah, but hopefully it will be better. Yeah. But Alex, do you have children? Yes, we have three daughters. So do they do also some music or they have yes, gone? Did. One did uh, play violin, the other one uh, played uh, flute, and the third one did fun flute. But mm -hmm. they, um, <laughs> they always said we, uh, we do it for fun because we know how much you have to do to do it professionally. So they didn't want to go in that profession. And the oldest one is, uh, is a doctor. And uh, the other two, the, other two uh, the twins, is, one is, is working um, in a, well, they, they have different uh, shops with, with internet and, uh, and so on. One is working with DHL, so it's completely different from harp playing. <laughs> That's really, and it's interesting because three daughters and none of them play the harp. Uh, one of them, the, the, the oldest ones, uh, did it a bit, but it was not it was not her instrument. So that's the choice, of course. That that can happen. Yeah, but I mean, you cannot force them. I mean, they should no. they should enjoy to play, and if they don't, then, then let it be. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. But I'm sure that you would like maybe that some of your daughter plays the harp at least, like for well, for fun. They like it in, in that way that they, they go also to concerts, not very often, but I mean, they, they like to to, uh, to go. And uh, the oldest daughter has two children, and um, we had a, a family concert a few years ago, and, and she went with the, the little boy. And he, he liked it very much. He was uh, very uh, interested in, uh, in in listening, and uh, well, it went well because she was sitting so that if he would not uh, like it, that she could go out. But it was not necessary. He uh, he stayed and he liked it. <laughs> well, who knows? Maybe this will be another generation of your family. I don't know because he is very technical, and uh, he does um, seven years. He is doing. Uh, with Lego things that are for uh, 12 and 14 years old kids. So, I mean, I don't know if he will play at all. <laughs> Maybe in a few years we will meet again and you will see, yes, that's that's the my, my grandson who plays the harp. It will we'll be see. lovely. We'll see. It will be really nice. But it will be certainly nice if we can see each other certainly next year in Cardiff. And if yeah. there is a chance again to meet online, it will be wonderful for another interview and just to share another stories is there any just story which you would like to share like with i don't know meeting some of the great composers or great conductors or great soloists or someone who you really admired and you met and maybe you have some story as a memory from from that meeting you mean in, in the past time you mean in not mm -hmm. in the future well um i heard uh, a few times live also Luca Sabaneta to go back in, in the years and mm -hmm. uh, 
and we had also a chat and uh, we, we spoke together after the concert and uh, that was um, and um, I um, I love very much um, Tatiana Tower who was a very good friend mm -hmm. and uh, so um, yeah and Madame Dulova of course that uh, that was uh, yeah was very mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. You mentioned Tatiana. Yeah, you mentioned Tatiana. She was living in uh, Holland, right? Yeah. yeah, she passed away in Holland. Yeah, it was a very sad. Um, mm. Yeah, she was very, very. Uh, and uh, but we uh, we were very close, and um, mm -hmm. uh, well, Gab Frog, uh, especially Gabriel, helped her a lot uh, in the last uh, months. And, uh, we, we took care of her and uh, and her, her mother. Her mother survived her and uh, she passed away a few years ago and she was 103. Oh, mine. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. And uh, the daughter of, of Tanya is, um, is a violin player. Mm -hmm. Good one. <laughs> I know she wrote me also, so I'm I'm a little bit in contact with her. So it's it's really nice that yeah, there are still musicians from from that wonderful harp um, going on is in the generation. Yeah. Yeah. That's lovely. Alex, I really thank you very very much for your wonderful time, for your wonderful sharing of all your stories. It's so lovely to see you after so long time again, and it's really. I hope that I will have a chance to see Gabriel next year as well. Please give her my best and best greetings and warm really hugs to both of you. Mm -hmm. And I wish you all my best, and I wish to everybody also to see. Uh, how wonderful harpist we had today. We will have some of his recordings. I will certainly post the recording from the World Harp Congress in Prague on the YouTube and just be waiting for it. And it will be certainly for your wonderful experience because it was wonderful performer and wonderful piece as well. And I hope we will see each other. Alex, take care. Have a wonderful evening today. And I wish everybody a wonderful day as well. And we'll see if you will have time tomorrow at six o'clock. We will have the live concert with Rosica Milovic. And I will be very, very looking forward to see all of you tomorrow. So take care, Alex. Take care, everybody. And have a great, wonderful evening. Many greetings. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.